Hello and welcome to part two of this painting tutorial where I take some uh, resin models of some fishing boats from any scale models UK and take them from the raw item to finished painted item. Now this is my way of painting uh, it's, as I've said in the previous video, it's not the only way. I'm not saying it's the right way or the wrong way. It's just the way I do it. Uh, I'm not an expert, and to be honest, what is an expert? An ex is a has-been, and a spert is a drip under pressure. I've just got a lot of years' experience of painting various things. I do a lot of miniature painting, and so I can extend those uh, skills to... Uh, for model railway. Now if you saw the previous video you will see that we took the basic models, we cleaned them up, uh, we washed them, we put them on uh, blue tacked them to bottle tops uh, and we put some primer on. I also discussed about paints and various types of priming. So now we're going to come to the part where we actually put some paint on. Now, having lots of experience also means I'm an old git. Um, I'm not far off 70 now, and uh, I suffer bell fingers, especially my left hand, with terrible arthritis, which makes holding figures and paintbrushes quite difficult now. And of course, getting old, the old eyesight goes as well, so I'll just swing you across. I've got one of these things, this is a you can see it's all battle damaged, but it, what it is is a, a magnifier with a light. So I hope this isn't going to blind you when I switch it on. No, because it's pointing downwards. But that is the only way I can paint, you know, delicate stuff, uh, detailed stuff. It's all right priming, I can do that just with wearing my spectacles. But for closing work, like what I'm going to need to be doing on some parts of this, I, I had to use that uh, magnifier, which means it's not going to be really very interesting for you to watch because you won't be able to see anything because it will be stuck underneath the magnifier with my head blocking it. But what I am going to do is show you what I intend to do. So first of all, brushes. I'm only going to need it for this whole project is two brushes. Now. Let me get them one at a time. This is just a, a cheap brush I picked. I can't remember where I got it from. Um, it's a number two. It's well used, and it's quite. It's got quite a big. It's quite a large brush, but it's very adaptable. If I wet that, I can squeeze the ends and make it flat, which is great for dry brushing. And then you just put it back in the water, and it'll spring back into shape. Um, it's important you look after your brushes, in fact, let me just reach across, excuse my back. I have this stuff, um, brush clean, clean cleanser um, and preserver. When I finish my painting session for the day, I give them a wipe through this. You can see, you just put some warm water on your brush run it through that and it's like a like a paste, like a grease, not grease, like a paste and it cleans off all the paint and then you leave it on and then before you you finish completely you just wipe it all off and your brush is then pristine or almost. The second brush I'm going to use, this, these are regularly uh, easily available, it's a, a character brush from Army Painter, I must have to hold it further away, I noticed yesterday the camera didn't like close-ups, it was going blurred. Um, and this has a nice fine point, so if we compare the two, you can see the one on the right is much bigger, got more volume to it. This is the one I shall use for the fine detail where this I'll use for everything else. So I'll put that back. They do come with these little plastic sheaves which do help to keep the the brush in good condition the bristles so I put that back on now paints now I've decided that 
The other one, the other boat I did was blue, a pale blue. So, and I was asked to show the paints. I'm going to use this one. Uh, these are all by a company called Vallejo. It's a Spanish company. Let me show you that. Don't want it to be bled. That's absolutely the bloody light here. Yeah. So if you can see that. And this is game extra opaque. You can see the number. It's the, the colours in Spanish of course. And it's heavy red. I'm going to make one of the boats um, basically uh, a combination of red and black. Because I think they'll go well together. But we'll see when we paint. If I don't like it I can change it. That's the beauty of painting. You can change your mind. The second boat I'm going to use Goblin Green. Again, it's a Vallejo. All my paints are actually a Vallejo. I've used Tamiya, I've used uh, Revel, I've used them all in the past, but these are my favourites. I, I, I do like these and they have a huge range of colours. So it's going to be a green, um, but the deck, I thought I might go for this a Bone White. Uh, which is basically a beige colour, um, just to give it a change it up a bit. So we'll have a green and white boat, and we'll have this uh, red with black. So those are the three colours I t I'm intending to use at the moment. That could change if I put some on, and I think now nah, I don't like that. I can change it, um, and that's the beauty of. Uh, when you're painting, you, you, you're always able to change, change your mind. Right, when I paint this, I'm going to start with the wheelhouses. Now, as I said before, because I paint, primed it in black, the windows, let me keep you in line, the windows, I need to go around the edge in, if, if I'm painting the red vessel in red and that will keep that black and it will be the same all the way around all the windows um, I'll have to paint that window sash there in red and the outside of the frame and the lower half is all going to be red anyway when we come round to the rear where the door is you see the door there you can even see its hinges now the door itself I shall leave it black but it will be red all the way around the outside and now I've seen these hinges close up and the, this camera's great when you I wish I could do this when I was painting I could be, I'd be able to see a bloody damn sight better there's a, there's, a, there's a handle there and there's even hinges I might just put a blob of um, steel on them or bronze, copper, something like that um, and so and for that as I say I'll use this small brush and care Keep up the piggy light and uh, just carefully work your way around. Once I've done that, I'll change to the larger brush for the, the lower half where it's just going to be the one colour. Then I shall move across to the hole and inside, if this is the red, the red vessel, but I'm going to keep a black deck, I shall carefully let me just try and get out my own light here carefully paint the inside with a small brush again of the bulkhead or the bulwark try not to touch the deck if I do it doesn't matter I can go back with black and uh, and, and touch it up uh, the the companion hatch cover over which I presume is the cruise quarters below there there'll be a mess room with a table and um, chair uh, benches and probably somewhere to make a brew uh, that's going to be red. I'm going to do the hatch of the fish room red and here this uh, hatch cover here which I assume goes down to the where the engine is which is going to be a diesel engine and um, it'll go down in there so that'll probably be red as well and while I'm at it the cleats I'll probably paint them in red as well so we'll have a red and black thing going on here um, 
Once I've done the inside with the small brush, what I need to do, I can then switch to the, to the bigger brush to do the, the bigger areas, such as the outside of the hole. Um, so that's the plan. Now, I'm, I'm ex navy and what I noticed straight away about these fishing boats was, in fact I'll show you it better, where you can see better, on the painted one. Um, it's only small it, and it doesn't make any difference whatsoever to the model, but there's no scuppers. And a scupper is drainage holes from the deck, so that when water comes on board, it can escape. Well, there's no scuppers on this. So basically, if, if we're sailing along in a taking waves over the bow, all that area, because this is a solid, solid bulk here all the way around, well, that deck is going to be three feet, it's going to be like a bloody swimming pool, isn't it? Because the, the, uh, the water can't escape. I imagine how much weight's going to be on that. Not only that, you're, you're not going to be able to get in or out of the, um, the crew quarter, and you're certainly not going to be able to get down to the engine space. And in fact, the water will probably, if there's a way down, water will find it. You probably lose your engine, and what's going to happen then? You lose your power, you can't make headwind, headway through the water. The waves are going to turn your bow, you're full of water anyway, and that's what's going to happen. So, yeah, it don't matter because this is just going to sit on a piece of hardboard or MDF, what's painted to look like C. But you know, it's like when you're doing a model locomotive, you you notice these types of things and not having scuppers um, was just it just hit me you know I thought well you won't get me to see on that bloody thing because uh, it's a disaster waiting to happen but that's that's a mean me a bye you know that's just me waffling on there right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some uh, red and some green on these wheelhouses and the uh, the vessel holes and then I'll come back to you. Right, it's now quite late in the day. <clears throat> um, the parts I've done have now had to cut. But I wanted to bring you back to show you the errors I've made. Because, experienced painter or not, I make mistakes. We all do. But the beauty is, with painting, is you can always go back and correct them. You know, it's not the end of the world. So, let's have a look at the red one. It's, uh, I wish it wasn't as fish light, but it looks reasonable. Um, it's, as I say, it's had two coats. Um, but you can see, maybe, I don't know how close I can get, because I know it goes out of focus. There's one or two bits of red on the black deck, which are mistakes which I need to correct. Yeah. But I'll just get a bit of black with a, with a small brush off. I shall just touch that up and nobody will be any the wiser. Now it's had two coats. I was thinking of a third coat but to be honest I think that looks it looks weather worn and, and, and that's pretty much what I want. If I put a third coat on it's going to look a bit too pristine, I think. So I think we'll stick to just the two coats. Uh, it, it, it's wheelhouse. Let's have a look at that. Now you'll see some of the window. Some oh, don't go too close because you don't like it. There's some bits of red, especially on this side here. Some red has got onto the window again. All I need to do is go back a little bit of black uh, and touch up the mistakes. It's not the end of the world. And I must remember to put some brass or uh, steel um, hinges and uh, door handle on, on these models. So that's the red one. The green one, again, not too bad. Um, one or two mistakes, what needs to be. The green one, I think I'm going to give it um, 
the, the red one I'm going to leave with a black roof to keep with the red and black flavour. But this one, I'm going to go with the, as I said before, this bone white. I'm going to try it. It might work, it might not. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It'll do as an undercoat for whatever the next colour is I choose to put on. And I'm going to put that on the roof of the wheelhouse and also on the deck. The deck of the, uh, the green one. Now, earlier I was telling you about the um, um, lack of scuppers, you know, the, the rectangular holes in the side to let the, water, the sea water out when water comes on board. But, when you look, if he made rectangular holes in all these sections here, this top bit would be so flimsy it would just break off. So, I think for the uh, the sake of the model, for the integrity of the actual model, he skipped the scuppers. And that makes sense. 95% um, of people wouldn't even notice he didn't have scuppers because they wouldn't know what a bloody scupper was. Um, it's just all gits like me who've got a bit of naval service and I, I like to think I like to call myself a, a retired naval veteran because it just sounds so much more classier than drunken old git but again there's one or two little errors on there which I need to correct nothing major and again I think the two coats will be enough she's not straight up from the back from the painter's yard She's had a few trips and she's had a bit of work on her. As I say, this one's going to have that uh, bone white deck. I'm going to try it and see what it looks like. I think the bone white deck and then uh, uh, some kind of natural wood for the um, the hold over the over the fish, the fish hold. I think that would uh, look quite nice. And I'm thinking probably at the stern where the engine hatches, maybe make that steel, just plain steel but i shall show all that when we get to it so that's as far as i've got um not bad and, and i'm quite pleased with how they're coming along one or two bits need a bit as i say a bit of repair doing but it's no great shakes so when i come back on the next one i'm also going to go into these these nets, I'm going to keep it away because it won't focus. Now, it, they're just prime black at the moment, but I'm going to show you how to dry brush. Now, if I get one of the previous ones, what I painted, i put it in my hand. You can see there's like a dark green, there's black underneath, then there's dark green, and then there's a light green on top. That's all being dry brushed on. But you can see the individual mesh of the net. Well, I'm going to do exactly the same thing with these, but we're going to have orange nets. And how I'm going to do that is any spare paint I've got from the red vessel, I'm going to dry brush this in red. And then once that's dry, I shall dry brush it again with orange. And I'll show you how I do that. And it's like magic. Uh, Anybody who sees it will say, oh, how did you do that? How did you paint? And you just say, well, I've got a brush with just one bristle. And they'll think you're either a genius or a bloody lunatic. But I'll show you that later on as we get closer. And also, it's the same technique with the, uh, the fish boxes, the ones with the fish in. I just paint them a, a pale grey, and then I use a bit of silver, dry brush on, to give them that, um, the silver skin. For the for the fish and it's as simple as that it really is a doddle so steve if you're watching this and i bloody hope you are because i'm doing this for you that's how easy it is it's as simple as this don't be f f afraid of having a go because you can't go wrong and if you do go wrong you simply go back and put it right and um, it's it's not you know it's not science it's not you know it's not hockey it's nothing like that it's just 
taking your time and being patient. And if you make mistakes, it doesn't matter. You go back and just correct it. As I say, it's not a race. You know, you just take your time. Enjoy. This is supposed to be enjoyable. I find it enjoyable and relaxing. It's not supposed to be a chore. If it's a chore, then you've got the wrong hobby. You know, it's well, certainly for painting, maybe not for model railways, but you know, it's, it's got to, you should be able to enjoy it. I can sit here for two or three hours, maybe listen to a podcast or bit of music. Well, I'm lost in my own thoughts and away I go. Um, it's enjoyable and it's, it's, it's all part of the hobby, isn't it? Right, I'm waffling again, aren't I? I'm boring you, rigid. So I'll stop this. Um, I think it'll probably be long enough to upload, actually. So I'll do that now, and then uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll get a bit further. We'll see how we do. So thanks for watching, and bye for now.